In this video, I want to show you how to calculate the beta of a stock using the correlation of the stock's returns with the returns of the market. Okay, so here's the formula we're going to use. We take the correlation of the returns of stock I, let's say Walmart stock returns, and the returns of the market. Okay, so we take that correlation and we multiply it by the standard deviation of the stock returns for firm I. Okay, so the standard deviation of a company's stock returns, is, we also call that the volatility. So we take the volatility of stock I, multiply it by the correlation of the returns of, of firm I uh, with, with the return of the market, and then we divide all of that by the volatility of the market return. Okay, and I'm going to show you how to do all these calculations by hand instead of just giving the Excel formula. And just one note, the correlation to get that, what we're first going to do is we're going to have to calculate the covariance of the returns of stock I and the market returns. And then, so that covariance divided by the cross volatilities. When they say cross volatilities, just means standard deviation of uh, the returns of firm I and the standard deviation of the market return. Okay, so this formula here, we're going we're gonna to have to calculate the covariance and then the standard deviation of each of these. That allows us to figure out the correlation. And then once we know the correlation, we're gonna, then we plug in the standard deviate, the volatility for each one, and we'll be able to get the beta. Okay, so you might, if you're taking a class, they might just give you the correlation. You wouldn't have to calculate it. But I'm going to show you how to do all of this by hand. So let's say we've got the monthly stock returns for the past six months. Okay, so we've got six observations here for a company called Bubsy. So that'll be uh, firm I. And then we've got a market index. Could be the S&P 500. There, there's some market index. And we've got the returns. We've got 11% for Bubsy in January, 17% February, and so forth. And then we've got the returns of the market index. Now we can calculate the average return for both Bubsy and the market index. It's 7.83% for Bubsy. 5.67% for the market index. So to get Bubsy's average return and just add all these returns and divide by six because there's six data points. Okay, now once we have these monthly returns, we calculate the deviation from the mean. And again, what we're going to be trying to do is get the covariance, which we need to calculate the correlation. Okay, so the deviation from the mean, what we're going to do is take Bubsy 11% minus Bubsy's mean 7.83%. That'll give us 3.2%. I, I just had this down to one uh, decimal point. That's why it's not exact. Okay, so there's a little rounding here. Uh, but here we're just taking uh, each observation 17% minus 7.83%. Okay, that gives us 9.2 and so forth. Okay, that's how we get these deviations from the mean. And then for the market, uh, we, we take the 8% minus the market uh, mean 5.67. That gives us 2.3 and so forth. Okay, so that gives us the deviations from the mean. Then we multiply these deviations together. So like 3.2% times 2.3%, 0.0007. Okay, this is the product of the deviations. And again, there's some rounding there. And then we add the deviations together. We sum all these products of, oh, uh, I think I include that one. So we add all these together. We get this 0.0547. We multiply by one divided by n minus one. n is the number of observations. So we have six. So it'd be one over six minus one, which is one over five is 0.2 so 0.2 times this okay that's going to give us our covariance 0.0109333 so now we have the covariance okay here's our formula again to get the correlation we've got the covariance we've got the numerator but now we have to calculate the volatility for both the uh, bubsy and for the market index okay so we're going to calculate the volatility which is the standard deviation of their returns to get that and again i'm going the long way just so you see every step we're going to calculate the variance of each. Okay. Now to get the variance, which we need to calculate the standard deviation, to get the variance, we're going to take the squared deviations for Bubsy. Okay. So let's ignore the product deviation, uh, uh, product of the deviations for a minute. Let's take the square. So here's Bubsy. This is uh, firm I, right? So we take 3.2 percent. That's the deviation from the mean. Okay. So we take that, square it, and that gives us this. Now for the market, 2.3%, we square that, and that gives us this, okay? For Bubsy here, 9.2% squared, that gives us this, and so forth, okay? So we go, and that we get all these squared deviations, but then we take the sum of the squared deviations, divide by n minus 1, and n again is 6, so divide uh, the sum here, the sum by 5, and then here we've got the sum for the market. We divide that by n minus 1, which is 5. 
Okay, and that's going to give us uh, the variance. Okay, that's going to give us the variance. So variance for Bubsy, we just get again. This is this sum divided by five. Let, let me cross this out. And so this is five. This divided by five. That's our variance. That's here we go right here. That's our variance. And then for the market, we take this, which is the sum of the squared deviations. We take this number and then we divide that also by five, and that's going to give us the variance of the market index. Now, to get the standard deviation, because remember, we, we got the covariance here, and then we said we need the standard deviation each of these to get the correlation. The standard deviation, we just take the square root of the variance. Okay, so to get the volatility of the standard deviation for Bubsy stock returns, we just take this number here, and we take the square root, which is this. Okay. So now, and then similarly for the market index, take the square root of this, and it gives us this, okay? So the square root of the variance will give us the standard deviation. Now, and I've just reproduced, this is the same formula as I had up above. Now we know the covariance, okay? We've got that, so we could, we could plug that in. So we got 0 0.01093333, and then, so we take that, and then we divide that by the cross volatilities. Again, that's this standard deviation times this standard deviation. Okay, so here is Bubsy. Here is the market. We that's our denominator, and then this here is our numerator. Okay, we take the covariance and divide by these cross volatilities. It gives us a correlation of 0.998541. Uh, so this is the correlation of the stock returns for Bubsy and the market index. They have they have this correlation, very high and positive correlation. It means they move together. Now, now that we have the correlation, we go back to our original formula for beta to calculate with the correlation. We've got the correlation here, okay, and then we're going to multiply it by the volatility for Bubsy, okay, that's uh, firm I in this case, and then we're going to divide that by the volatility for the market return. Okay, so here I just plugged in this correlation, 0.9985481, um, and then we've got here the standard deviation for Bubsy. This is where that came from. Okay, so we plug that in, and then the standard deviation for the market returns, that just came from right here. And so if you take this and multiply these two together and divide by this, what you end up with is a beta of 1.851. Okay, so our beta is 1.851. What does that mean? For example, if the market return were to, so if the market return were to increase by 1%, we would expect that Bubsy's return would go up by 1.851%.